The SNP, uh, the BBC News story, this actually happened in the last hour or so. Colin Beatty, police arrest SNP treasurer in finance probe. Uh, he was arrested uh, by police earlier today. Now, it comes um, just two weeks after Peter Murrell, the SNP's former chief executive, who is married to Nicola Sturgeon, was also arrested by officers, I think we can see pictures here, who searched his home in Glasgow and the party's headquarters in Edinburgh. Mr Murrell was later to released without charge pending further investigation. And this afternoon, uh, the fairly new First Minister, Hamza Yusuf, will set out his priorities for the next three years in a statement in Holyrood. Uh, let's speak now uh, to the uh, BBC Scotland political correspondent, Jamie McIver, who is in Edinburgh. Uh, Jamie, tell us a little bit more about what happened this morning. Well, of course, Joe, we're very limited in what we're actually able to say on this kind of story, but uh, Police Scotland said about nine o'clock this morning that an arrest had been made. I'll talk you through what we can say. Police say the arrest was made in connection with the ongoing investigation into the funding and finances of the SNP, and the report will be made to the Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service in due course. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about Mr Beatty. He's 71. He's the MSP for Midlothian North and Musselburgh, and he served as the SNP Treasurer for 16 years up to 2020, and then he took the post up again last year. There's no sign of any police activity at his home this morning. Now, of course, two weeks ago, uh, police uh, arrested and questioned the former chief executive of the party, Peter Murrell, the husband of Nicola Sturgeon. He was questioned for several hours, then released without charge. And police searched uh, Mr Murrell's home for over the course of two days. Those images of the police outside the home were seen not just across Scotland and the UK, but all across the world. But the actual police investigation into SNP finances has been going on for nearly two years now. Uh, questions were raised over how some £600,000 spent for a, an independence referendum campaign was spent. Questions were raised after accounts showed just £97,000 in the bank at the end of 2019 and total assets of about £272,000. But certainly when it comes to the timing today, it's not uh, perhaps what the SNP would regard as helpful when they would want want the focus to try to go back onto politics, policies and the aims and objectives of the new First Minister, Hamza Yusuf. All oh, right. Well, thank you very much for that. That's Jamie McIver in Edinburgh. Um, Hamza Yousaf is setting out his priorities this afternoon. Um, but actually, there was leaked video footage at the weekend that emerged from March 2021 of Nicola Sturgeon playing down fears about the party's finances at a meeting of the party's ruling National Executive Committee. Let's just take a look. Just be very careful, uh, all of us, about suggestions that there are problems with the party's finances because we depend on donors to donate. There are no uh, reasons for people to be concerned about the party's finances and all of us need to be careful about not suggesting that there is. Just taking into account what we heard from our correspondent there in Edinburgh, why did Nicola Sturgeon say that about the SNP's finances? Uh, well, Jamie McIver um, read out some figures from 2019 uh, Nicola Sturgeon was speaking in 2021 and if you look at the audited accounts on the Electoral Commission website from 2021 uh, you'll see that there were £600,000 worth of reserves. So uh, Nicola was absolutely right and I've got no reason to doubt today mm. that the finances are in good health. Right, you have no doubts at all. Because people might say, just what is going on with the SNP? This investigation has been broadly going on for quite some time. And people will say, well, is the party close to bankruptcy, despite what you've said? Well, no, the party isn't close to bankruptcy. I've, as I say, I've got absolutely no doubt that the party's finances are in, are in good health. Because you know that or you've been told that? That's correct, because I've been told that. And I, I believe that's the case. And, you know, you make a, an interesting point. And I'm going to also be very careful of what I say. I, Someone has uh, been arrested. We're not going to talk no, about no, specific no, no. Individuals or specific yeah. allegations. Indeed. I'm talking But I think this is really important. Mm. Uh, you know, Jamie McIver, they made the point this investigation has been going on for two years. Mm. Nobody has yet been charged with anything. Uh, I think the sooner this is brought to a head, whether someone is charged or not, the better, to be brutally honest. It does, however, throw up 
a slightly larger problem that goes beyond the SNP. But let's about political, but no, 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 about no, political party that. funding will, and scrutiny and you, transparency. And you, you can know. talk to the other parties about yeah. that in just a moment. But let's just stick with yeah, this sure. issue because very much in the headlines at the moment. You have no concerns at all, Stuart Hosey. Uh, you are not worried about anything to do with the way the party's been run or its finances. Oh, I, I, I'm, I, I'll be really honest. I do not think this is a good look. I will, be well, <laughs> I will be extremely honest and say uh, there's an awful lot more, as Hamza Yusuf has said, that can be done in terms of transparency for party members because it's their money mainly, right? And I think that's really important. So, yes, there are a large number of things which can be done, which the National Executive have already put in place so that we can deliver the transparency that people want and need from all political parties. Yes, I mean, I think there are colleagues of yours in the party who feel that they are literally hearing about this in the newspapers, on the airwaves, in headlines. They don't know what's going on. Do you accept that actually the SNP is not being transparent, even with senior members and colleagues of yours? No, I, I've just said, I think we need to put in place mechanisms which deliver much more transparency. So if someone asks a question about the finances or about membership, they get the answer they need and they get it when they need it. I mean, looking at the other parties, um, you might question, um, Liz Kendall, why Labour aren't doing better in the polls in Scotland, uh, despite all of this being across every single paper pretty well. The SNP is still way ahead uh, of Labour. Sawa has made significant strides forward here, and, and this is because the people of Scotland are being let down by two governments, uh, the SNP and the Conservatives. And we hear about, uh, you know, uh, we're going to hear about the priorities of Hamza Yusuf mm. today. I mean, the problem is this. You've got record weights in the NHS. You've got record levels of child poverty, of homelessness, right. of drug deaths. Well, and Hamza Yusuf was absolutely at the heart of a government that has delivered that. He is the continuity candidate. He has lost sight of the yeah. priorities of the people of Scotland because he's so concerned with independence. And look at this issue over there, uh, the SNP's finances here. Mm -hmm. A serious issue. You were quoted yesterday saying, oh, this is just a po political bubble issue. It is not. People need to trust their government with their taxes, and if they can't trust the SNP okay. with its own money, you're in serious right, trouble. Liz, that's, they need a change. That, that, it's time for that, a change, and it's Labour that's delivering. That's very it. interesting, and Labour have been spectacularly incapable of beating the SNP now for over a decade. But if you want to speak about trust and money and party finances, six months ago, I think the Guardian were reporting Labour had lost 91,000 members and were £4.8 million pounds in the red. What went not so being wrong? Investigated by what the police, went Stuart? so wrong? And why is Keir Starmer so bad at managing the uh, finances of the Labour Party and even keeping his own members? You're being investigated by police. It's a serious issue. I hope it is sorted out as soon as possible. What this you shows need to answer the question, is, though, is, is a why would Labour of five secrecy? million pounds in the red? Stuart, if you let me finish, a culture of secrecy and cover-up. People in Scotland want the government to be focused on their priorities and I think the divide and the absolute acrimony within the SNP, it actually doesn't surprise me. You base your politics on the politics of division and you're a divided party and that is a huge problem for the people of Scotland oh who desperately need Liz, change. And the problem is Labour now base their politics on the Tory politics of Brexit. In oh. lockstep, well. red Tories, blue Tories, not a cigarette Let's paper. Well, let, between well, let, the yeah, well, let me come to, to the Tories and Siobhan Bailey. I mean, why, why are the Tories only flatlining in the polls? Labour's improved uh, a little bit in Scotland at 30%. The SNP, it's still at 42%. The Tories on 18%. If you take everything that's been laid out, Liz has talked about the SNP's record, which I know you would counter, and the investigation into finances, why are you still doing so badly? Well, listen, I mean, I think. It, if it wasn't so serious, it would be completely fascinating to watch what's going on with the SNP in Scotland. And it's been a one-party state for a long time. And as a unionist and someone who believes passionately in the union, um, it, it is, it's great to see the SNP looking like a bit of a busted flush. But I don't think that we should be really concentrating on the politics personally, because the neglect of the health service, the education service up there, the highest drug deaths in Europe, those are the things that need to focus. And I know the Scottish 
Tories are doing that day in, day out. So I, I think there is an awful lot of work to do. I don't think Hamza Yusuf have to be too worried about his priority speech because Keir Starmer gives loads of them and nobody remembers them. Um, we've got, Rishi's got some very good five priorities that everybody does remember. So, uh, uh, But I think in terms of Scotland, we've got to get some very serious action well, on, those, the, on those well, high well, Let, let me come priorities. back on that. I mean, you, you mentioned education. You know, 50% of the people in Scotland have a tertiary education. Mm -hmm. That, uh, by that measure, is the best educated workforce mm -hmm. in Europe. You look this, at is, the PISA this is actually really, really important. But back to the issue of money... Well, hang on, I, just I, on no, the no, education, no, 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 I will just... come back to the money, but let's just be clear yeah, with our sure, viewers. Sure. Uh, Scotland has actually slipped down uh, the PISA tables and that's over a period of years, yeah. and that was very much the metric that Nicola Sturgeon used to swear by. If you look at the PISA... Uh, uh, metrics, mm -hmm. uh, particularly I think it's in English. Yeah. Scotland went up and then came down. Yeah. Uh, England yeah. went up it, slightly. Well, fine. They both but started off imagine, broadly they the came same down. place, and they're both about the same place today. But in terms of the They've money, I, I asked I asked Liz Kendall a question. Let, let me ask you a question, Siobhan. I mean, again, it was within the last year. I think Open Democracy were reporting there was three point five million pounds of Tory spending from twenty nineteen. Which couldn't no one could identify really like what it, it was spent on. Oh, Why on? Think, so you explained today right, well, what was the three point five million pounds actually spent on? I, I think, given the focus on the SNP, you do well to answer some quite serious questions at the moment and just Absolutely. be really honest. And the three point five this. million, what happened to deflecting? It? What was it spent on? It's not going to serve you well, and people can see what's going on. What right. Well, let's on? well let's let's go back to the finances um, and the state of the SNP. Uh, uh, Harry, is this just deflection by uh, Stuart Hosey uh, when it comes to the questions that he may legitimately be pointing out about the other parties? As, as charming as Stuart is, that was a masterclass <laughs> in, in, in deflection. And there's a reason that I think uh, there's a sort of wry smile in Westminster at what's happening in, in Hollywood now. It's because the SNP have been the people that have been the, the boy pointing at the Emperor's new clothes repeatedly. They have been the ones going on the attack. And now there are scenes reminiscent of a banana republic up there in terms of having a former leader's house raided, tents erected in the gardens. I mean, if it wasn't for Liz Truss, I think we would describe Nicola Sturgeon's implosion as probably the biggest fall from grace in modern political history. It's an extraordinary turnaround of events. Um, Siobhan mentioned a one-party state and a lack of scrutiny on the SNP. I think there is a question to be answered there about that's not necessarily a criticism of, of, of my colleagues in Scotland, but the way the, the, the SNP have been so dominant in Scottish politics for the last decade, even, even more. Um, I think the, there are serious questions to answer. Yes, this has to be allowed to run its course, but there is very little topspin you can put on your former leader's home Absolutely. being raided by the cops and your former treasurer being arrested. Let's see what happens. But try as you might, Stuart, it's, a, it's not a great day for the SNP. Is the party imploding? No. No, the party is not imploding. I mean, I, I checked with my own constituency uh, people this morning. Uh, Still there. <laughs> 140 new members in the past two months. I'm very pleased about that. No, Would the party is not imploding. Look, I've been honest. This is not a good look. I wouldn't deny that for it's a single... It's more than not being a good look, I, I Stuart. I wouldn't deny that for a single second. Let the police do their job. Sure. Let the party put in place all of the yeah. mechanisms they need to put in place and let's get through that, this problem. That's, I think, the question, because if, if, if it was anyone but the SNP, you would be screaming blue murder. You would be saying, you would be saying, you'd be calling for heads to roll before, you know, before an even knock on the door had happened. Now, I think the, I think the, the problem the SNP have got themselves into is that being pure and pure and whiter than white, allegedly, and being the first ones to call people out and call for action beyond the police and, and all that, it's letting, letting process, you know, take place. That has not been a, an issue. The SNP have allowed other other p political parties in this situation the, to allow them. What the public will see is instead of focusing on the issues that matter to them, they are absolutely Im imploding here, and the facts about their record speak for themselves. And I think people do want to change. And certainly, what we are seeing now is that people are beginning to see that the way to get rid of the, uh, the Conservatives in Westminster and the SNP in Scotland is by voting Labour. In fact, well, the leader of the con Conservatives in Scotland <laughs> suggested that people should actually vote for the party most likely to get rid of the SNP. And you are starting to see that change in the polls. How many seats do you think you get in a general election? We know that there have been briefings uh, reported about 20 or more seats from the SNP. Is that what you're looking at? Well. I would never take any of this for granted. Mm. 
We want to fight for every single seat that of we can course. get. But, but a, is a that recovery the ballpark? Mm. in Scotland is absolutely essential for a Labour a government across the United Kingdom. It has been an absolute priority for us mm. and will remain so. And Anna Sawa, whose speech yesterday talked about change right. and the future, that's what the public wants. We're not seeing it just yet, but as you say, there's Huge a, a little, a little bit of time progress. to go before the general election. You talk to your uh, constituency mm. office, as you would. Some of your colleagues are pretty shell-shocked, I think, by what's happened. Uh, the SNP's deputy Westminster leader, Myrie Black, has been talking uh, to my colleague Nick Hurdley. Let's have a listen. I mean, if you were going purely by the headlines, it's Armageddon, you know. <laughs> um, I think obviously there's there's stuff that's going to need to be clarified and need to uh, have very clear answers for. I'm finding some of these things out as you are, as they're breaking, you know, on the news or being reported online or whatever. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's a, not a a great place to be in, but. Uh, we are where we are, I suppose. I mean, she sounds pretty resigned, doesn't she? I mean, she's the deputy leader uh, at Westminster. She's finding out online and, and through news bulletins. I mean, it's just well, not acceptable, is it, for a party? Well, hold on. The police are, quite rightly, not going to tell anyone in advance the actions they're going to take. Mm. So I'm going to find out at exactly the same time as you're going to find out. Uh, and Mary's absolutely right, the substance of what she said, uh, you know, there are changes which have to be made. And mm. I wholly concede that. Hamza's already put that in place. The NEC agreed a whole package of uh, measures at the weekend. And that's exactly what we'll do. All right, you can listen uh, to that programme on BBC Radio for tomorrow evening at 8.30. Leading Scotland Wear by my colleague Nick Erdley. Just briefly, though, uh, before we move on, we could just show the daily record here. Nicola Bacton, SNP Finances. Rao Hamza, I won't suspend Sturgeon. He's defended the former First Minister. Uh, do you think she should be suspended, forced to stand down while all this is going on? On what grounds? Well... Uh, your colleagues are, or oh, sorry, opposition uh, MSPs are calling for it just while this probe well, is going. Well, they would, wouldn't they? Right. Uh, no, there's no justification whatsoever for, for, for Nicola being suspended from the party. And no, she should not step down pending this. The investigations into whoever the police are investigating will run their course. If people are charged, let's see what happens. If people aren't charged, let's take it from there. But no, she should not be suspended. So you'd like to see Nicola Sturgeon back in Holyrood? Well, uh, she's going a... around her business, uh, there were reports that she was avoiding uh, being seen. No, there weren't. Uh, the first no, there were reports. The, the First Minister decided to work from home this week because Hamza is making his main first big keynote policy speech. That was a very sensible course of action. Uh, I'm sure Nicola will be back at her desk next week. Let's talk about something else. Uh, fostering, because...